Church, how are you guys? We are about a week and a half into the quarantine here in North Carolina, and it is just a beautiful day. The wind's blowing, it's really warm already, birds are chirping, and it's the second day of spring, so we've got some really beautiful blooms here. Let me give you a little view. I love these white bushes out front. They are so pretty. For the moment, it is peaceful and calm at my house. Um, my husband is out back building a chicken coop. We're having, we're getting chickens. So that's one good thing for me that has come from the quarantine. I can't wait. What is one thing that, um, that you've done that maybe you wouldn't have normally done if you hadn't been forced to stay in your house? So comment below, let me know something you've done. Let me know where you're watching from. And one more thing, if you could let me know some way that I could pray for you, I would really just love to pray for you. Um, we all need to band together and lift each other up during this time. It's hard. Um, I've had my days. Today is, it's just been a really good day. So I want to talk to you today about faith and worship and kind of how those go hand in hand and then how we can use those during this time, faith and worship in our lives. Let's, let's start with prayer. God, thank you so much for this day. Um, thank you that even though we can't come together, Lord, we can connect online. Thank you that we have that option and we're not totally alone. God, thank you that you go before us, Lord, and you have seen the outcome of this. And God, we pray that we would just in full faith depend on you, Lord, and look to you. Um, not to the news, not to our friends, not to anybody else, Lord, but that we know the truth comes from you. We're confused and we're scared. God, but we know that you hold tomorrow. We bless your name, God. I pray um, that this message would reach the person that needs to hear it. God, I pray that you would teach me something in giving this message. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that you're watching with us. And um, I just wanted to share. My first scripture is from Hebrews 11.1. 1. I, I bet a lot of us have it memorized. And it says, Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Um, I'm a word person, so I really like to break stuff down. And so the Amplified Version does a great job of that. And it says, Now faith is the confirmation of things we trust and expectation and the proof of things we have not seen, perceiving as real fact what is not revealed in the senses. And that's basically like, you know, we believe in God. We can't see him. We can't touch him. We can't fill him with our hands. Um, but we believe in faith as fact in our hearts that he is God. Um, and so I want to also share with you Mark 12, 30 in reference to what is worship. There's a lot of different scriptures I guess we could pull, but I think this one really just sums all of the scriptures up into what is worship. And um, one of the religious leaders of Jesus' day, just to set it up for you, came and asked Jesus. He was really trying to trap him. And he said, what is the greatest commandment? He was expecting for Jesus to pull from the Ten Commandments. And Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all your mind, and with all of your strength. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. And so um, a lot of times in church, we think of worship as we get together when we sing. That's worship time. But that is not the biblical definition of worship just in and of itself. We have lots of different forms of worship. But it all goes back to the heart. Um, giving is a form of worship. But if your heart's not right, then you're not going to even think to give. So yes, singing is a form of worship. And we can really, we can do that and our heart's not right. Um, receiving the word is a form of worship. Um, because we're, you know, bringing our intellect in, bringing our mind, and we're hungry for the word. Let me go through really quick um, the Greek of what those words mean. So heart um means our thoughts, our feelings, our understanding, and our emotions. Love the Lord your God with all of your emotions. That's a hard one. Uh, soul, that would be basically the life inside of you refers to your soul. Love the Lord your God with all your mind. That is um, your habits and your intellect, your knowledge. I saw it something written out that said that the person who loved the Lord their God with all their mind would be somebody who applied themselves to know God and takes pleasure in his truth, which reminds me a lot of Psalm 119. Um, if you haven't read that recently, go check it out. It's exactly what love the Lord your God with all your mind means. Um, and then love the Lord your God with all your strength. That means your absolute power, your might, your force, and your ability. 
So that goes to say it would be physical strength and spiritual strength. So that's a lot I know, but I think it's safe to say worship is loving God with every ounce of your being, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Um, John Piper says, well, let me first say John 4, 23 and 24. So we're going to bring them together kind of and share with you what Jesus said. But an hour is coming and now is here when true worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. The Father seeks those who worship him this way. So one, the Father is seeking worshipers and not Sunday morning worshipers, not people who go to church on Sunday, but then all week long live like the world. That's not, that is not who he's seeking. He's seeking worshipers who will worship in spirit and truth. What does that mean, spirit and truth? True worship, John Piper says, true worship comes from people who are deeply emotional and who love deep and sound doctrine. Um, they have strong affections for God that are rooted in truth. Okay, so worshiping in spirit would be, let's say we're only worshiping in spirit with no truth. That would be those people that the Bible talks, they, they go with every wave of doctrine. doctrine. They just flow, go with the flow. Um, they're not really checking back at all. They're not at all checking back to the Word of God to see, is this right? Is this what the Bible talks about? But they're just, you know, believe in every wind of doctrine. doctrine. So you don't want to be somebody who only worships in spirit, although we are going to pour all of our emotions into it. Let's talk about the other end of the spectrum, somebody who only worships in truth, so you're in the Word, you know the Bible, um, but there's a no emotion there. You know, sometimes we can get to a place where, well, the Bible says this, the Bible says that, but then it just becomes rhetoric, it becomes legalistic. Um, it, you have to have a mix of both. That's why God didn't say, you know, He didn't stop when He says He's looking for a time, or He's looking for true worshipers. He said He's looking for true worshipers that worship in spirit and in truth. So you have to have both. Yes, we, you know, he wants your full emotion, but yes, he wants your full mind. You know, give him all that you have in worship. So one, number one, worship is not a, a one-time thing, not a once a week thing. It is a lifestyle. What are you doing in your life um, that is honoring to God? What are you doing that is displeasing to God? If you read further down um, in Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about, um, they lived in a way that God would not be ashamed of them. That really caught me off guard because I thought, oh my gosh, am I living in a way that God would be ashamed of? So you really want to keep that in check. Yes, we all make mistakes. We all mess up. We all fall to our knees. We all have messed up really bad. So you are not alone, but it's the heart. It's, is there conviction there? You know, are you fully surrendered to the Lord or does something else have your worship? Is something else a little more important than reading your Bible or a little more important than seeking after God? Is your own will in check? Is your pride so great that you think that, you know, nobody can tell me what to do? Y'all, we want to be humble. I pray daily, God, help me not to be prideful. Let, let me do what is right. And when you love God, it's not a legalistic thing. It's, it's a joy. You seek after him and you find ways because, you know, the Bible talks about he will reveal himself to those who love him. Jesus said that before he went to the cross. So we really want to just focus on this week. How are you worshiping God when the worship music is off? When the preacher's not preaching, how are you worshiping God when you're doing your dishes? How are you worshiping God when your car won't start? How are you worshiping God? I shouldn't even say that. <laughs> when your toilet paper runs out. Um... No, but when stuff stuff happens, are you worshiping? Um, worship is a complete lifestyle. It starts in our thoughts and overflows out of our mouths and into our actions. I'm going to read that one more time. Worship starts in our thoughts, overflows out of our mouths and into our actions. Um, if you're spewing hate, if you're telling everybody, you know, things that would make them fearful, that is not worshiping. Yes, we need to follow the precautions. The Bible talks about following the laws of the land. I think it's Romans chapter 13. We are to follow the laws of the land. Um, I have no issues with the church closing, the churches um, closing. That was the right thing to do. Um, we're trying to keep people safe, but at the same time, you can't live in constant fear. 
because the Bible says that we are to take shelter in the Almighty, that He is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. And, you know, that's not something that we should take lightly. We lay in, lean into Him. We get into the Word. We worship with music. We worship listening to, you know, pastors on the radio or podcasts or going live. Um, but most of all, we turn our hearts to Him because when you fall in love with Jesus, you know, it's even better than when you fell in love with with your spouse or your child or, or the way you love your parents. It's just this deep place where you belong. So I encourage you today, if you're not there, you can be there. It doesn't take a spiritual person. You know, anybody can get there. The Bible says in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believed in him would not perish and have eternal life. Go to God tell him, you know, I've done wrong in my life, Lord, but I want you to save me and direct me, direct my paths, Lord. I give the ownership of my life. I give that over to you. And I trust you to be the Lord of my life. In Romans 10, um, 9, I think it is, it says, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. So I want to encourage you today that if you haven't accepted Christ, it's not too late. He's there. He's there for you and he's waiting for your call. If this message has meant something to you, I encourage you to share it. Share it with a friend that might need to hear it. Um, and I just thank you for taking the time to listen. And I look forward to the next time that I get to see you guys. You have a great afternoon.